What is up, everybody? Chase Oliver here, bringing you another video to my channel. Well, this is technically a podcast because you can't really see my face, but that shouldn't matter. Because right now what matters is my guest. My guest of honor here on my channel. I am excited that he has decided to show up his face. I never thought he would do anything again on YouTube. I thought he was done. You know, I talk to this man every time. But I know a lot of you guys miss him. So please, everyone, welcome my guest at this time, Ace the Wrestling Nut. Ace, how's it going, my man? Yo, what's going on? It's yeah. been a while. It, it feels weird. I don't know. Yeah, it feels weird being on YouTube. Now, guys, I brought Ace on because Ace is a really good friend of mine. Me and him still talk about professional wrestling. We talk about a, a bunch of other bullshit as well. And he pretty much Facebook messaged me, Chase, next time you're doing your predictions for the Royal Rumble, let me know because I want in on this. And that shocked the hell out of me because normally Ace gives me his predictions and we talk about the card. But I was so surprised that Ace want to come on and talk about the Royal Rumble. And Ace, how have you been? What what have you been up to? Tell the good people out there what you've been up to. Um, not a whole lot. I um trying to think when I last I think my last video was about when the Leafs lost. That wasn't really wrestling related, but I felt I had to make it. That was I guess <laughs> the the end of grade twelve. So so yeah, I, I graduated. Um still just kinda of working and hanging out. I got to travel a bit which was cool. So I, I went to Europe last, mm -hmm. last, last summer, uh, right? Was April. It? Yeah, yeah last April. Yeah, last spring. You, so, you, you're uh, saying it for a bunch of people in Ireland, like you did karaoke? Well, when, no, that was, uh, that was Germany. But Germany. when I, um, when I left, I made sure, like when I was booking it, I made sure to book it the day after WrestleMania. I left on the Monday and I remember oh. watching Raw from the, uh, from the airport, like in the, what do you call it? Like in the waiting room or whatever. And I remember watching Paige beat AJ because, like, I, w I wanted to watch Raw. But, like, I was my flight was at, like, 8 o'clock or something. And on the mm -hmm. West Coast, it starts at 5. So I missed missed half of Raw. But that's how dedicated I was. I wasn't missing Mania. Like, I booked a, a, a European trip. I was where Sweden and Germany, two weeks in each. And so I made sure to book it. I remember I was pissed because I booked it after WrestleMania. But I came back. I think I landed about nine o'clock at night, and that was like right after Extreme Rules, so I had to look up the results to that. But, but no, I've been uh, yeah, yeah, I've been uh, working, traveling, just kind of hanging out. It's not that like I remember, you know, when I decided to stop making YouTube videos, it wasn't like I don't even know why I did it. I, I feel like I stopped liking doing it. I stopped liking coming on. I started hating watching like a pay per view, just knowing I was gonna have to make a review afterwards. Or oh man, I can't wait to shit about this because that's not fun i mean it's not fun to just always be negative sometimes it's necessary you, you need to laugh you need to joke but i was just i don't know i was getting in a rut and i felt like i started just making pay-per-view reviews because i didn't really care about talking about mm -hmm. anything else and i you know i knew eventually i'd do something again and you know i just wanted to wait for the right time and i I don't know, I kind of felt like this, yeah, I guess it's been, the last time I think I talked about wrestling was like 2012. Yeah, so that been, was the last time you did a wrestling video, was 2012. So it's been like three, fuck, I don't know how fast this time goes, but yeah, it's been three years now, I guess if you, because it's 2015, so I felt like this was the time, you know, Mania's coming up. I, I was thinking about doing something last year, but you know, re there was nothing really, besides, I mean, what are you going to talk about? Daniel Bryan, and that was it, which was cool, but... Uh, maybe Wyatt and Cena, but we, we know how that ended. Yeah, so. no. <laughs> Let's well, not be reminded of Wyatt and Cena. And also Undertaker's streak ending. That that kind of yeah. dampers you if you have to make a video on that. Because, like, for me, I, I, I honestly did not want to talk about WrestleMania 30 because, like, mm -hmm. I liked The Undertaker a lot. And when his streak ended, I was like, fuck, I have to make a video? Like, And I'm not the biggest Daniel Bryan fan <laughs> in the world. So how do you think I felt seeing Daniel Bryan walking around like, yes! Yes, yes, and and Undertaker streaking, and I have to go talk about this pay per view. Yeah, like I don't know. Uh, I'll tell one story quick before we start. I know uh, after Mania, because I was leaving the next day, my buddy Sean calls me and he's like, "Hey, you're leaving tomorrow, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I gotta go." And I was still like, I didn't even want to leave. Like <laughs> that ruined the beginning, like the first couple days of my trip, just <laughs> thinking about the Undertaker streak, and then. I remember the day day after I recovered from my jet lag, because it's like nine hours ahead, uh, first thing I find out is Warrior dies. It's oh, like, yeah, that was the worst. Dude, that was in <laughs> class. Like, but I remember, what do you call it, the night after Mania, it was like 8 o'clock, my buddy Sean messages me, and he's like, hey, let's go hang out, you know, it's your last night, and he takes me downtown, and uh, like, I'm, you know, I'm leaving, I got a 
catch you know a boat to go to the, the flight because they live on an island. I got to catch the boat, and so I, I leave it like tender. I was supposed to leave it eight, but we kept pushing it later because we took me out and he got me loaded. And I remember uh, my buddy who doesn't even really watch wrestling. He um, sorry that was my Facebook. He doesn't really watch wrestling. He's a um, He's an amateur wrestler, so he kind of, you know, we joke about it a lot, and what's the real wrestling, and what's pro, but, um, and he sends me a Snapchat, and this is at like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and he, was, he sends me a Snapchat, and all I, all I remember seeing is, fuck, The Undertaker lost, and I was like, man, I know, right, it's fucking crazy, uh, no, it was, I didn't believe it was going to happen, I remember, um, I was like, man, he was like, that's the third F5. And I was like, shit, he's going to kick out of three F5s. But no, no, he didn't. Mm-mm. That was nuts. It was a damn shame. Damn, damn shame indeed. I wish the streak had never ended because now we're forced with Brock Lesnar as champion. Now nah, I'm just, uh, okay, I'm not the biggest Lesnar fan. You all should know this by watching my channel for a long time. But anyways, it's time to talk about the Royal Rumble. Thanks, Ace, for informing us what you've been up to. Now it's time to talk about the Royal Rumble. And Ace, let's be real here. You and I both know. You didn't come on here to talk about the great matches like the New Age Outlaw versus Ascension, or Paige and Natalia versus the Bella Twins, or the Ooh Souls defending their tag team titles against the Miz and Damian Miz now. We want to talk about the meats and bones of things. Well, I kind of wanted to talk about the New Day and uh, Adam <laughs> Lewis and Lewis and but I guess if we got to skip over it, I'll but, take a bullet on this we're one. We're not going to skip over it, but we will give just quick, who do you think's gonna win? All right, so the New Day versus the Job Squad. Who's gonna win there? New Day. All right, yeah, I'm on the same boat. The New Day. That's a terrible pre-show match. Uh, the New Age Outlaws versus the Ascension. Who's winning? I the Ascension. Yeah. I, I don't know why I would. Whatever. The Ascension. Paige and Natalia versus the Bella Twins. Either or <laughs> flip a coin. Uh, Paige, Paige and Natalia. I'm saying. going different here, Ace. The Bella Twins. Ooh. All right, then, and, and now the. <laughs> So's taking on the Miz and Damian Miz now for the tag team titles. Oh man, I want to talk about this for one second. I just want to say, um, I, I guess no, uh, SmackDown. We're filming this on the Thursday. SmackDown in America now. That's and they Thursdays. They switched it to Wednesdays uh, in Canada. So I was watching SmackDown last night, and uh, fuck, it was just so funny that I love Sandow. M- Miz uh, is the best dude. That dude is amazing. Thursday. Uh, I really I like the the Usos try to play like a seed of doubt in his head like he goes over are you jumping over the ropes. <laughs> so I really uh, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to about the Rumble. I just wanted to point it out quick is I I want to see Sandow and or Miz Dow and Miz. I want to see something happen there. So yeah, me too. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, Usos. Why why would you put the belts right back on them? Yeah, uh, Usos. Yeah, the Usos. All right, so there's your prediction of the undercard people. And look, we don't need to break down these storylines. Most of these matches don't even have storylines, okay? They're just thrown together. Don't don't try to come on here in the, in the comment section and say, Chase, obviously you have to watch all the episodes of Superstars and SmackDown to know the storyline between Paige and Natalia taking on the Bellatones. No, I'm not going to waste my time. Neither should y'all. I don't y'all. Know Raw half the time. <laughs> Man, I don't well, I stay pretty informed. I don't even finish a full raw. Yeah. I mean, like you don't even need to watch Smack. You don't need to watch it. Well, I guess NXT is its own thing. You don't need to watch superstars or main event. Or, there's no point. There yeah. Really isn't. It's just raw, and you don't even need to watch raw half the time. Mm-hmm. So. You, you can just read the stuff online. And you get enough information as it is. They post all the good stuff on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They're, they tell you this is what you should be watching. Like, I guess the Hulu Plus edition. If you have Hulu Plus, they give you like an abridged version of Raw. So they cut out all the shitty stuff, but they keep this stuff that should be watched. So Hulu oh. Plus, the WWE is even telling you if you're subscribed to Hulu Plus, this is what you should be watching. We only have the three hours, so we can make more money. <laughs> so yeah. But anyways, now it's time to talk about the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. At first, this match was supposed to be Brock Lesnar taking on John Cena in a final encounter, but it changed. Because thanks to Edge, being a dumbass that he is, getting caught by Seth Rollins, uh, John Cena had to bring back the authority. And so the authority decided, you know what, because he's Seth Rollins and he did this for us, he's now in the title match. That was kind of weird to me. Why would you put Seth Rollins in this situation? I don't know. Ace, were you fine with Seth Rollins being added to this title match? Or were you just kind of like, huh? Why would you well, put Seth Rollins in this situation? I remember at first, I um, how I found out about it, because I wasn't watching Raw. I think it was um, 
It was the same night as the World Juniors for the Canadian, and they were playing Russia. So I, I <laughs> you were watching the World Junior, like, was hockey or, or baseball? Yeah, you know, it was hype. It was uh, Canada and Russia, and <laughs> that was okay. a sick game. That was awesome. But uh, but I was watching that at the time, and my dad and I were at Boston Pizza for it. Um, and I'm looking at Twitter because I wanted to, you know, I was going to watch, uh, I was going to watch Raw because it replays at nine here. So I was going to watch it then, but I, I, just, I didn't care about spoilers. So I was just reading Twitter. And at first, it, it didn't make sense when Seth Rollins was in. I was like, why? Like, he's got money in the bank. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, uh, okay. Um, you know, I, I can kind of get into it. And uh, I, I like the idea now, you know, especially I think the match is more interesting with mm-hmm. him in it. And yeah, it's not just I, I, I agree Cena with that. As they're in Cena. I mean, we've seen the match. I guess, you know, we saw it twice. The, the last, the first time, SummerSlam, well, I guess not the first time they fought, but. I was into that one, and then Night of Champions, I just thought was shitty. I don't know. I didn't really get into that a whole lot. But, uh, but and then this one, I was just like, oh, okay, a rematch, whatever. But then when, you know, at first it was kind of weird with Seth in there, you know, but the more uh, the more they built it, and the more I kind of, like, thought about it, the more interesting it got. So I'm for it, and I, I think it, it works out for the better because now we're talking about it, and it's, you know, more interesting. So. Yeah. If it See, for me, my problem with it was this, uh, like, you were telling me your last three pay-per-views were pretty much useless, especially in marquee matchups. So it's like, hell in a cell. You have John Cena taking on Randy Orton. Winner gets to face Brock Lesnar. Well, it didn't matter because this match turned to a triple threat. So that match doesn't even matter anyways. There's a Survivor Series main event. They made a big deal about the authority ending, but the authority's right back. So that main event didn't matter. And then John Cena versus Seth Rollins at TLC, that match didn't really matter anyways because like Seth Rollins is in the title match. So, for me personally, I just kind of felt like it was like a wait, like you wasted us three months of our lives that we could have gotten yeah. back. That's especially, the- especially uh, you know, uh, Survivor Series, because mm-hmm. that, like, that whole show was literally built around the Cena versus Authority. And, like, I, I legit going into it, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, I was like, oh, well, they could get rid of the Authority over, you know, are they really going to do that? And so it was interesting and it was cool. And then Sting, it kind of shits on the whole Sting moment, too, in a way. But. Kind of. I think with the stink moment, it's one of those moments where you can you can make an argument that yes, it does shit on the stink moment, but at the same time, it's like, well, stink finally made it to the WWE, so I'm not gonna compl- like maybe no. further down the line, like when it gets like probably like 2018, 19, 20, when we look back at Survivor Series 2014, yeah, most people will probably say like, but it ruins Sting's debut in the WWE, especially if Sting doesn't have a strong WWE run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially, and then they'll say, like, oh, man, you remember when Sting debuted and helped end the authority? Yeah, but fucking Edge screwed it up, and he just came back two months later. Mm-hmm. Like, well, pretty much. But... Fucking, what was he thinking? <laughs> yeah, I know, seriously. <laughs> of a ring, like, buddy. Come on. You're hurt. <laughs> you're hurt. <laughs> I, but, like, I kept thinking about it, and, like, that's like a hostage situation. Like, in, in real life, not wrestling, like, in real life... If somebody was saying, if you don't do this, I'm going to break his neck, like, couldn't, where's the security, where's the authority to be, like, not the authority, but where's the fucking, uh, yeah, security, or cops, or whatever, to be like, no, you're not going to fucking cripple or kill a man just to get your fucking boss back in charge. <laughs> it's kind of dumb, but. Yeah, know, they, they, they're too busy with their backs looking at the crowds, I don't know, they were doing something else besides help out Edge. Sure, you know, drunk fans tried to save them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Ace, who do you think is going to walk out as a WWE Heavyweight Champion? But who do you want to walk out? Like, so who do you think is going to walk out? But who do you personally want to walk out as champion? First answer, who do you think? I'm going to say Lesnar. I'm going to say I think Lesnar. Just because, mm-hmm. like, at first I was on the fence about it. And I was thinking, oh, maybe Cena's going to win it back. Because, like, I don't know. I'd rather, I don't, you know, uh, I don't really necessarily want Cena going into Mania as champ. Um, but I'd rather, and maybe I shouldn't say the main event because then it's going to spoil the rumble, but, uh, I don't know, going into it, I was thinking, oh, well, maybe Cena would be a better fit going into Mania as champ than Lesnar, but at the same time, it's like, you can't have, you know, after beating the streak, Mm -hmm. you can't just have him lose the belt at the rumble and face fucking, like, Brian or something at Mania, right? Like, yeah, I feel like he should need to go in as champion, but in, you know, but in the back of my head. I kind of wanted Seth Rollins because I was thinking about it more. And um, I forget what – I think it was on one of the Facebook um, – because I follow a couple of them when I 
I don't know. It's funny to see people fight on, <laughs> on Facebook about wrestling. So I, I follow a couple of the uh, I follow a couple of the sites. I think it's No DQ or something or Spotlight. But uh, somebody posted like a, a little mania build up, and they said like, "Well, think about it this way: Seth wins the title. Let's say Roman wins the Rumble. Let's say, you know, Seth doesn't cash in. Let's just say he just wins it, just mm-hmm. straight up, right? Just." And then they vacate it, and then maybe they have like a they have like a tournament or whatever going into uh, not the chamber but fast lane, and uh, and then let's say Dean wins it. Let's say he beats like I don't know whoever he beats. No one cares. Um, and then let's say he cashes in, and then I was thinking maybe a Shield triple threat That'd for the title, cool. and I'd like to see that. I think that would be sick. I, I think that's like the the one main event where everyone's a winner type of deal. Yeah, no matter, I mean, people would say, it, it's tough because people are starting to turn on Reigns now. It's almost like Dean, I think, would be the clear-cut babyface going into that. There's no there's no getting around it. Um, but at the same time, you know, if Roman's their guy and they're going for Roman, that might not be healthy for him to be in that environment if they want, you know, this to be his big signature moment. And if he goes over Dean, I feel like that would hurt him a lot more. Then let's say if he went over somebody like Seth, yeah. and even if he went with the Brock route, and you said let's say you had Brock and Reigns, which I think would kind of be a weird matchup, but uh, let's say you have that, and then he, you know I think Lesnar's got a lot of momentum going for him right now, and like people, I don't care that he ended the streak, I don't care that you know he beat John Cena, people are getting behind him, and they're actually yeah. so it's it's kind of a shitty situation because he's supposed to be your top heel who just fucking killed the undertaker everyone's favorite wrestler but people want to see him kick everyone's ass so so if you have brock and roman go into it i think there's going to be a lot of fans that still want brock to win and even if roman beats him and you know it's this great wrestlemania moment it's lesnar's last match let's say and then he goes to ufc or whatever he does if his contract's up i i don't know if that's the best route where i feel like if you had seth rollins and roman reigns or seth rollins maybe dean ambrose even if you just do Seth and Roman, I feel like that'd be a lot better. It makes more sense that they're having a match, you know. Mm-hmm. He fucking just turned his back on him in the June, right? So it would make sense from a logical standpoint. And then, um, or if maybe if you had Cena going in, right? Uh, Cena and Reigns, maybe I don't want to pass the torch or whatever, you know. The storyline they do all yeah. the time when it's like a young guy versus an old guy. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was kind of rambling. The question was Seth to win. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd like Seth to win because I think there'd be more interesting dynamics there. But I feel like you can't have Brock lose, especially coming after Mania, especially coming after like beating The Undertaker, destroying John Cena. You can't just have him drop it in a shitty way to Seth Rollins at the Royal Rumble. Like, mm-hmm. so so I'm gonna say Brock, but I wouldn't I wouldn't hate to see Seth win. I I, I don't know. I wouldn't really be too mad with anybody winning. Even Cena. I mean, why well, Cena wins now? It's his, his 16th. Yeah. So, I feel like they need to save that for a bigger moment, though. <laughs> yeah, no, John, John Cena needs that whole pay-per-view. Like, it, like they would name that pay-per-view, like, Cena, Glory. Like, Glory Cena. Or, like, the road to grow Glory. Like, they would make its own pay-per-view for John Cena when he's going to break the, the record or tie the record, at least. So, yeah, I agree. Like, I don't yeah, think like, it's I'm time gonna... to give Cena his 16th. Like, I know a lot of people are like, well, why would you make it so that way Cena looks great in the 16th title reign? One, this is the WWE. We know their man crush for John Cena. If you guys do not see their man crush for John Cena, you are blind and you're stupid. Because no matter who is on top, the man of that company will still be John Cena at the end of the day. And two, John Cena is the hero. Me and Ace have realized this. We have accepted it. That John Cena is the undisputed, undeniable proof that he is the hero of the WWE. It's funny with Cena because I started off like when I started getting into wrestling when I was like nine, eight years old. I loved Cena. Cena was the coolest thing ever. Um, Mm -hmm. And I actually liked him a lot longer than most people did. You know, I got to like, I think, well, 07, I wanted Lashley to win that one match. Mm -hmm. And then I went, I I hated Cena that night. And then I went back to loving him the next day. But it wasn't until like uh, maybe. 2010 maybe the nexus where i was kind of like okay that's enough and then when i started coming on youtube it was like a gang mentality well everyone hates cena so you know so just being around that energy i had to hate cena too and 
but it's funny because it went from liking him to hating him, and now I just think it's fucking hilarious when he beats people because it's like everyone's like, "Oh, Bray Wyatt's gonna be the next guy," and then he fucking throws a set of stairs at him, and it's just <laughs> done. He's over, and it's fucking hilarious to me. Like I know it, it's shitty because you know they they took time and Bray was interesting and. Going into Mania, I thought Bray was the shit. You know, I was like, man, Bray Wyatt's dope. You know, Eminem's playing in the background. It's awesome. I love it. And then it was fucking horrible. And, oh, man. And then Extreme, like, the, the what do you call it? The Steel Cage was awful. Oh, that like, was the worst match I've yeah, seen in a while. Just, I don't know how they could have booked it any worse to look like Bray was just this, like, fucking loser. <laughs> horrible. Like... Man, they did shit all over his momentum. Then he had to get rid of his fucking family. Like, <laughs> that's they still haven't really explained. No, he just let them why. free. He just let them free. He just said, "Fuck it, you guys are. I'm done with you, losers. Go away." <laughs> and then I don't know where it's like, yeah, but Aaron Rowan, or not Rowan, uh, Eric Rowan, the good guy, the like fucking garbage man. We, you I can't pick like Luke Harper. Fuck Luke Harper. He uh, apparently he's not as important in the world anymore. Like, what has he been doing? He hasn't been doing anything. Actually, that was a really good ladder match with uh, with Ziggler at uh, TLC. That was a good yeah. match, but not a great one. No, no, and it's not like we're going to be talking about it years down the line, but no. I thought he held his own. I, I've always liked Luke Harper. I remember said, like, what I forget what I was, it was something of Mick Foley, and I remember he was talking about, like, him doing work as a heel, and some what a promoter or something said to him, oh, you can never be a heel. You have kind eyes. And I, thought, I always thought, like, that's a kind of a weird fucking thing to say. But uh, but after watching Eric Rowan, like, they try to hype up his fucking eyes are creepy or whatever. But Luke I don't Harper. know. I, I, think, I think he's got kind eyes. He's got very kind eyes. <laughs> so Luke Harper is a nice person to you? <laughs> I think he's going to turn face and, you know, it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Further down the line. Okay. Just run. All yeah. right. Alrighty then. So for me, Ace, I'm on the same boat as you. I think Brock Lesnar. I, I think Brock Lesnar should win just because, like you talked about before, he put so much time and investment in this dude. You might as well have to keep the title. And, but yeah. I do want Seth Rollins to win. But I don't want Seth Rollins to pin John Cena because that that's just like a pussy way. That's that is, just that, that's just such a pussy way to get the title off of Brock. Like in all like, honesty. Like, like, like Brock's fucking brawling with uh, Jamie Novo. <laughs> He's like, oh, Brock smash. And he's like knocking Kane into the third row or something. And then Rollins just like fucking grabs Cena's tights and ro- runs out of the rumble. Like, I mean, it'd be funny, but that'd be really shitty. Yeah. Imagine the one thing I would love to see more than anything else at the rumble is the celebration party if Seth R- Rollins wins. Like, yeah. Down, champion, champion. Fuck, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> That would be a good celebration. But I, I do want Seth Rollins to win because, like, to me, he's, like, one of the better heels in the company. And the WWE has put so much time and effort into him. Like, keep it, keep in mind, Seth Rollins, he's an internet darling. He's, like, everyone he, – he's, like, an internet darling. Like, everyone on the internet appreciates and loves Seth Rollins for his in-ring work and stuff. Yet this motherfucker, even in the smart mark towns, he still gets booed. He finds a way to still get booed out of the building. That's good shit. And I remember, I remember us because we talked forever. But I remember us talking when the Shield, um, when the Shield first debuted, and we didn't really like Seth Rollins. We, mm-hmm. we made fun of him a lot, but uh, a lot. But I remember the one thing that we kept saying, and I'm sure a lot of people were like that. You know, everyone was looking at, you know, Dean Ambrose, you know, talking or cutting promos with uh, like Mick Foley, and everyone was like, oh man, Roman Reigns is huge. He's gonna be crazy, right? But no one was talking about Seth Rollins, and I, I find it funny that he could be the first one out of the Shield to win a, uh, a, to win a championship. Yeah, so. he could. He very well could. And like to me personally, I would not mind Seth Rollins winning the title, like just because it's like you've been building up this guy for such a long time that he's able to hold a championship. Just my belief is is that if you're going into WrestleMania, especially a new area like Santa Clara, with a new stadium. And you have all these dudes on the poster. You have Batista. You have The Rock. You have Brock Lesnar. You have Cena. You Triple H. Sting might be making an appearance. You have all these guys on the poster, and yet the champion is Seth Rollins. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like no offense to Seth Rollins. It's just bad on the WWE's marketing team. It's just Seth Rollins to me. Like, yes, you hardcore fans would be like, oh, it doesn't matter to me. Seth Rollins is awesome. Like, 
Yeah. He's. He, it will be awesome if he walks out as WrestleMania's champion. I will not deny that. But walking in and he's your main event. Uh uh-uh. uh. You, you expect Seth Rollins and whoever the fuck he is facing to uh, to freaking overpower Triple H and Sting. Yeah. Or yeah, any Cena yeah. match because Cena, you know, Cena's gonna get a big match. So it's just like you can't expect me to believe that Seth Rollins can follow up. What a Triple H and Sting and whatever John Cena is doing, whether he's facing Rusev or Dean Ambrose. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just that, it's to like, me... No, I totally get it. It's like when I look at, um, even like a couple of years back at Mania 27, when it was like Cena Rock, but no one knew who the fuck The Miz was. Mm-hmm. Like, The Miz. And he, and he was the one that walked out with the championship. And even looking back now, you know, three years later, as hardcore of a fan that I, I am, and I haven't, you know... I haven't stopped watching or I haven't gone away. And, you know, I even forget that he was in the main event of WrestleMania. Because you see him doing shit with Miz Dow, and it's like, you know, oh, right, yeah, this guy was WWE champion. Exactly. The main event of WrestleMania with John Cena and The Rock. The, the, like, the, the, the only time I'll accept Seth Rollins walking into Mania as champion if it's a Shield triple threat. Mm-hmm. Or if yeah, if he's fighting someone, if he's fighting someone big, or if it's a Shield triple threat, or because I think that match, if especially okay, if you're going with Reigns as the guy and you want him to be in that upper echelons mm-hmm. with the Batistas, with the Cenas, with the Ortons, with the you know those guys, if he's going in against Roman, I think that could be a really interesting program. Especially you know the storyline writes itself with the whole Shield and yeah. the whole it writes itself. Like so. Yeah, it's easy to write for WWE creative doesn't have to think too much. It it'll be great. But you've been talking about we've been talking about a lot of people in the Rumble. So I think we can put this one to the side. I think both you and I can agree that this could be a pretty damn good match for the world title, right? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I'm actually um, it's one of the uh, title matches going into the Rumble. I'm actually looking forward to. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I guess with The Rock and Punk, I was looking forward to that. But what was last year's? Uh, Oh, Cena and Orton, yeah, I didn't, couldn't No, really no care. one cared about Cena and Orton. <laughs> there was one year Punk and Ziggler, I mean, I like Punk, I like Ziggler, but, like, I didn't, you knew Punk was gonna win, so what was the point in watching the match? With this, it's like... But it's a five-star win. classic, Ace, that's all that matters. I legit don't remember. <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. I don't even know if, like... Well, when you said Punk and Ziggler, I was like, wait, they fight for the world title? But then I remembered, I think... What, was it that year the world title? Was Del Rio doing something? No, way. I can't even remember what the world title was. Oh, it was Daniel Bryan, Big Show, and Mark Henry in the steel cage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, God. What was fucked about that? Going down memory lane for a second. What was fucked was Ziggler stole Punk's title. And I remember he just ran off with it. And then the next night or the next week or whatever, Punk had the title. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Stage, like, hey, man, enough with those shenanigans. Give me that. Give me the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think we both agree that we think this match has been very well booked by the WWE, which is a surprise because they barely do that with their the title last matches. Segment on Raw, like I'm sure a lot of people were talking about it on YouTube, but the last segment on Raw, I, I, I was watching a podcast or something, and they said, if that doesn't make you want to watch the Rumble, nothing will. That was, <laughs> that was sick. The only problem I have with that segment is that you set Brock Lesnar after, after the heels, so it's kind of like, huh? <laughs> like, like as the baby face, right? Yeah. Like, was sick. Nobody wants to fight. They want to see him fucking kick someone's ass. Right? They want to see him go out there and fucking destroy everyone. It's funny. Like, when he slammed Kane around, that was fucking hype. When he like, picked up Big Show and he did that, wow, I was still surprised he could be able to do that. Him. Like, people can say what they want about him not being there or whatever. They're, like, people want to see him fucking go in and suplex somebody 16 times or, like... Oh, even after Mania, and this is getting a little off track, but even after Mania, everyone hated him. You know, everyone just despised him. And then after the Heyman promo, like, everyone was like, yeah, woo! Like, people want to like him now just because he's a no-nonsense fucking does what he wants, mm-hmm. fucking beats the shit out of whoever's in his way. And there's something cool about that, right? Like, all the shitty heels that we have nowadays just run away, and they're not fucking, you know, Seth Rollins booked it away from Lesnar on Monday. We don't want to fucking, you know, we're not supposed to cheer for them, but even like, um, like with the Ambroses and stuff, there's just nothing there, you know, with, with Brock Lesnar, he's fucking destroying everyone, he's, you know, so I, it's really shitty that he's a heel for them, or, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's supposed to be, it's a, uh. Yeah, maybe, it, it, that, that's my that was my only problem, but yeah, that ending segment, was, like both ending segments of last night, uh, Raw two weeks ago, were really good stuff. Like you know the contract signing and that you know, 
So oh, yeah. the contract sign was really good. So like they they've really done a good job with booking this title match and making you excited because like like we said, anyone can possibly win this. I mean, Cena's a golden child, Seth Rollins is a dark horse, and Brock Lesnar is like cr the current champion that they want to try to keep happy so that maybe he will resign for you know the future. So anyone can win this match. It's going to be a much better match than any Cena Lesnar match. Let's just face it. Like Cena Lesnar yeah. going at it again. Like we don't need to see that. That that's that's done. I mean, Seth Rollins will be doing most of the... He'll, he'll be the warrior in this match. He'll do most of the work, and he will get a lot of credit, and a lot of people will start liking Seth Rollins a little bit more because of this. So, mm -hmm. it is what it is. That. It's funny, you could almost argue that Cena's, like, not the third wheel in this match, but it's almost like a feud between Brock and Seth, which I think is interesting, because you don't mm -hmm. see a whole lot of heel and heel feuds anymore. But, like, I like the dynamic between the two of them. Yeah. So, but it's weird. You could almost argue that, you know, John frickin' Cena is the, you know, the third wheel. N never, know? Ace. Never. Like, come, come on, Ace. That's why he, he got his friends fired and he brought them back like a good person. He did bring them That was really nice of John. That very was very nice. nice. Very you nice. Know, he, he, not only did he, he got rid of the authority, but he saved his one of his best friends from, you know, breaking his neck. And then they all get fired, but you know what? He, he fucking at the end of the day, he came back and he he got his friends rehired, and they're not mad at him at all because you know how pissed I'd be like, I don't care how much I like a guy, so, man, <laughs> you know, I know that I got you fired at all, but I mean, dude, did you really want him to die? No, but fuck, man, like I gotta pay bills, like yeah. The, the Pissed is beyond me. I'd be choked. But. <laughs> you fucking Cena. He's so he's such a good guy. No one's angry at Cena. Never ever. I mean, throughout his life, he's never shown good friendship to Garbage Man, Big Sh uh, Ryback, or Dolph Ziggler. But yet, they hated each other like a year ago. They even showed it. They're like, oh Ryback, he said that you can't, you're not fucking cool. They hated each other. Cena dumped shit on Ziggler like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> but Ace, at least he did that to all of them in front of their face, like a man, like a man. He did. He did. He's very commendable. <laughs> okay. John Cena and the shenanigans. <laughs> Fucking Cena. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the 2015 Royal Rumble match. Now, Ace, yes. I, I'm I'm gonna play some word association here. You you'll you'll give me thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle. And you can explain your reasoning afterwards. You give that answer. So I'm going to name some names that are in the Rumble. And you tell me if they're going to win or lose. And you, not win, but thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. And where you can see them going. Like if they're going to have a good showing or not. All righty, yeah. Aces. This name is going to be a wild card here. Justin Gabriel. Justin Gabriel. <laughs> uh, you can't see my thumb right now, so I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> I actually put it up for a second, but I forgot we're not filming. Uh, <laughs> why am I your thumbs up for Justin Gabriel? No, we're not up. It was, it was down. Oh, okay. Don't do anything. Um, they, I don't know if um if they've confirmed Kofi yet or not, but like I'm, you know, every year everyone looks forward to the Kofi stunt. But if he's, but since they didn't confirm it, I was thinking. I I read his name because I looked at the twenty or whatever people that are uh that are in it, and I saw Justin Gabriel. And if Kofi's not in it, are we gonna see something cool from him? Or? Maybe. Uh, I don't know if he can do anything cool. And he's going to come out. He's going to be in there for like five minutes and he's going to get knocked out. So it's, no, there's thumbs down. There's no, thumbs down. There's no, it's kind of sad. There's no hope for, for Justin Gabe. There's just some superstars you know where you just look <laughs> at them and, you know, everyone says, oh, you got to grab the brass ring or you got to, you know, try your hardest. There's some people you look at and you're just like, man, they're going to be on superstars until they get released and then they're going to fucking <laughs> go to Destination America and finish their career there. It, Destination just, America. Justin Gabriel's one of those guys. Like, I'm not going to bullshit. I'm not going to say, like, oh, yeah, why aren't they pushing Justin Gabriel? I wouldn't. If I was a fucking Vince McMahon, I wouldn't push Justin Gabriel. <laughs> There's no hope. I'm sorry. He's not winning. He's, you know. Okay. All right. How about our current United States champion, Rusev? What are your thoughts on him? Thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle? I'm going to say thumbs in the middle. I don't know if they're going to give him, like, a a huge moment or a... I mean, I know they're trying to build him, and whether he goes into Mania and faces Cena or... There was another name. So Ryback. Some, Ryback, I was thinking that. Uh, Brian, May, whoever he faces. Um, 
they, I know they want to go into Mania making him look as, you know, obviously as strong as possible, but I don't know if they're really going to give him a huge showing here. Maybe mm-hmm. he'll knock out a couple people and then just... I could see him, like, getting knocked out by someone really shitty, like a Maven kind of thing, and then him just, like, going to town on them afterwards and fucking putting them in the, the crutch or whatever the fuck it's called. Okay. But, so I could see him I could see him going on a tear and maybe throwing, like, six or seven people out and then fucking, like, Fondongo. I know, I guess he needs to be a baby face. Um, Kofi or something. I don't know. Just throw him out, like, I don't know where. And everyone's like, what? Where is that? And then he just beats the shit out of them. So, but I don't, like, I don't see him going, like, Final Four just because if he goes that far and he loses, I think it would kind of hurt him more so than where he, if he just, like, slips up in the middle of the rumble, right? So, yeah. I thumbs in the middle because I don't expect, like, something crazy to happen for him. But I think he'll, I think he'll do well. I think he'll be okay. What about Bray Wyatt? Um, I, see, I, I think you can almost argue, like, people have been saying, like, oh, Brian should win it, oh, uh, Roman should win it, Dean should win it, whatever, right? You could almost argue that Bray could use it, but there's just no one for him to face that would be champion. Like, I've heard different things, whether it's like, oh, Bray and Sting, which they're not going to do anymore, or, oh, Bray and Taker, maybe, right? But Taker's not going to, you know, win the title. I, I don't think it's the timings right i mean i i think he'll have a good showing i do think he'll do well maybe maybe start him off one or two have him go a long way um i was actually really surprised who was it michaels that picked him on on raw but um i don't i'm trying to think how they would like get him out without hurting him i'm gonna say thumbs in them i'm gonna say thumbs up because i think he'll have a good show i think he'll do well but I, at the end of the day i just don't see him winning all right <laughs> Post post rumble for him, I think if he won. All right, Ace, everyone's favorite corporate Kane. Ah, yes. <laughs> I remember I was pissed because what was it? The year that he came back and fought um, Cena with the embrace the hate thing, he wasn't in the rumble because of it, and like he had like a streak going on where he was in every rumble, and I thought that statistic was awesome. And then he wasn't in it, and then 2013 he did the whole hell no thing, and he was in the rumble, and then. 2014 out with the whole uh, punk thing, and I remember I was pissed because they played it off like it's like oh Kane's been in every Rumble since '98. It's like no motherfucker, he missed <laughs> missed uh, 2012, and I was pissed about that. But uh, that's whatever. Um, mm, I don't know. I think he'll just be someone to feed to Brian or Roman Reigns or something. So I'm... <sighs> it's so sad <laughs> seeing him in his fucking dress pants and elbow pads. <laughs> It's depressing, it really is. Um, I'm going to say thumbs down. <laughs> oh, no. Poor Kane. <laughs> Poor Kane. I thought, I, thought, I thought it would be much more higher. You know, he needs two more eliminations before he passes Shawn Michaels for all oh, time. Actually, no, I totally forgot about that. Maybe, okay, I think he'll break that record. Maybe he'll throw out fucking Uso or something. <laughs> One of the Usos, or, or our boy Justin Gabriel. <laughs> Justin Gabriel, there you go. I mean, get him a paycheck. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say thumbs in the middle. Because I, I do think he'll break the record. I forgot about that. Yeah. You know? And they'll make a big deal about it. And then Reigns will be like, no, bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can see that happening, too. Um, Dom Ziggler. Uh, this is another guy where he's not quite in Justin Gabriel territory. <laughs> But he's close. Like, oh shit! I'm trying try to do good things with him, but it's just—I don't know. It doesn't. It's not that he doesn't connect with the audience because people do like him, but it's just something's missing. I—I I don't know what it is. Every time they try to get him up there, just something shitty happens. But like, Ace, Ace, they, like, they hear you. They hear you. Like Dolph is telling us that we they hear us, but obviously they don't. But I agree with you what you're saying so far. That was Bo Dallas for a second. Oh uh, no, that's that's Dolph Ziggler. Every time he comes out, he goes, "They hear you!" Like he points and he screams like like a crazy lunatic. No, I'll take that back. He's not quite Justin Gabriel territory, but it's just like man, no, whatever they do, no matter how close they get him, it's like. People are like, man, he ended the authority. Nobody remembers that. They remember Big Show fucking punching Cena and Sting coming out. No one, like... And then the next pay-per-view, he was in a fucking... The opener for the Intercontinental title. And then he gets fired, and then he comes back, and 
And I mean, people could say, oh, give him a good showing in the Rumble. But didn't they do that, like, last, like, 2012 or something? Mm-hmm. After he lost to Punk, he came out at, like, 1 or 2 or whatever. Oh, yeah, the year against Jericho. No, that was 2013. Yeah, that was 2013 where he came out number 1. Yeah. But he, um, you know, there's only so many times you can have him go 50 minutes and then be like, well, nice try, Dolph. <laughs> well, I'm going to say thumbs in the middle because he'll probably, they'll probably have him be in there for a while. But... I don't expect a breakout performance where this, you know, they finally understand Dolph Ziggler is a main event talent, therefore they let him win the Rumble, and then he goes on to Mania, and it's not going to happen, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's it's not, like I said, he's not Justin Gabriel, but he's, he's, uh, like, like just, I don't know, Justin Gabriel carries his bags, like he's, he's that, they're connected somehow. <laughs> Alright, what about Stardust? Oh, Stardust, um... I think they teased, like, I don't know, it seems like a lot of the shit that they do now, it's like, they've done it before. I mean, they, people copy people off the time, even, like, wrestling copies each other, but it just seems like, the only thing I could, like, imagine with that, he'd be do, he'd do something where he goes to throw Stardust out, or, but didn't they do that, like, a year ago, too? So yeah. it's like, you know, and then you know they're just going to be friends at the end of the day, because it's, it's not worth investing the time to break them up. Like, it's not. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, people talk about, like, the brother and brother feud. Like, that ship has sailed long ago. It's fucking in Jamaica right now. Like, it's <laughs> in Jamaica. Like, well, what's he gonna, like, take off the face paint and be like, I'm not running around with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's sad, too, is I see WWE writing that in their script and, like, man, that's genius. One of the Vince words, what was the, the Batista, what was, no, what was the Jericho, uh, uh, he was talking about the punk promo. Call yeah. Bastard. Bastard. Call him your brother. <laughs> Tell him he's not your brother anymore. Oh, oh God. So, sorry, just as thumbs down or thumbs in the middle. Uh, I'm just going to say thumbs down because I, I, I want to give him a thumbs in the middle because I like Cody, but he's not going to do anything, so thumbs down. All righty, then. How about the lunatic fringe ace, Dean Ambrose? Now, this is a guy where I can actually, you know, if they do the whole, you know, they say about, like, Dolph, oh, give him a little bit of time in the Rumble and it'll be good for him. It's not going to help someone like Dolph. He's done that before, but Dean's new. If you give him, like, 40, 45 minutes in there, um, let's say he maybe he opens it with Roman Reigns, he, you know, whatever. Um, I think that he could actually really benefit from it, unlike, you know, uh, Ziggler or whoever else. Um, I think – I don't think he's going to win um, – I mean, Flair said it, so maybe. That was, I, I want to talk about that for a second. That was so funny <laughs> when fucking Flair and Big Show were going at it. Man, <laughs> that was, that was fucking dope. But, uh, I don't, I think he's actually going to do, I think this is going to help him. Um, he could win. I don't see it happening. Um, but I think he'll do well in this. I think he'll have a, have a decent showing. All right. So, uh, I think, I'll say thumbs up. I'll thumbs up. Fun. All right. The, the winner of the Andre Gi- the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, Cesaro. Nothing. He's gonna get tossed over those four ropes so fast. <laughs> like, if you didn't have a reason to not get behind Cesaro before that, he just gave you a reason right there. It, I don't even know if it was necessarily that he fucked up in saying that, because I don't know. Initially, I believe I got like when he, because I'm fucking rambling here. He pointed at the four sides when he said the, these four ropes, and I got it. And I didn't even think about it until he said. There's four sides, and I was like, no, why would you say that? Come on. But if that didn't, like, kill all of his momentum, having fucking Barrett come out and beating him just fucking squashed it. So, so no, he's not going to do – I'm done with Cesaro, too. I'm sorry. I liked him. He was cool. I was actually really behind him after Mania and when he won the Battle Royal, but done with him now. There's no no interest. Maybe he can get it back, but – Right now, it's just no. I'm gonna say thumbs down. Is he? Wait, he's in the rumble. Yes, he, he, yes, he's in the rumble. Okay, well, he's not gonna do shit. Maybe he'll swing a couple people. Maybe he'll throw a big guy out. But I'm not gonna get behind it. He, he, because he's gonna get dumped on his head by someone dumb. So. What? What? Okay. Uh, did I say the Ryback yet? You haven't. No. Oh, okay. Uh, just we we mentioned him. I just wasn't sure if we said Ryback. So Ryback. I'm gonna give him a thumb. Either. See, they could either, like, do something shitty. Maybe, oh, maybe they do, they, remember when I said Rusev comes out and goes on a tear, and then maybe Ryback throws him out. If they're going to do Ryback and 
Rusev because I I thought like going into it that was kind of a match I wanted to see. So um, so maybe maybe that's gonna happen. I think Ryback will do okay. Um, it's still so hard to believe that he went like because he was final two with Cena a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was people. I remember we talked about it. We were saying like. You could have found a way to do Brock and or not Brock, um, Rock and Cena without having Cena win the Rumble. Because then if Ryback won it, let's say he fought Big Show. I remember we were talking about mm-hmm. that a while, like a couple of years back. But uh, I don't know. Like for a while there, I, I felt like oh, it's too bad. Ryback sh- sh- ship has sailed. But now I don't know. Like I feel like since he came back and since he did the whole Authority thing, like oh, Team Cena, Team Authority, and he was like the wild card. I felt like I could. I, I was kind of getting behind him. And I don't know. Like. I liked the promo that he cut where he, like, talked about his past, but in a way it was kind of weird because it's fucking Ryback, you know? <laughs> and so it, it's kind of like a Brock thing. People aren't into Brock because he's like, man, I was so little when I was a kid, but then I drank a lot of milk and I lifted weights. And <laughs> Brock was there. That's not why people cheer him. They cheer him because they think he's fucking crazy. And, like, Ryback could be crazy because he's fucking huge. Like, he's, he, he's fucking huge. And, like... He just comes out and he's like, I was very depressed for a long time. <laughs> I read the power of positive thinking and it changed life. Like, I mean, it was cool, but like, I feel like you could have done that with somebody, somebody else. Like, I mean, I know it was actually Ryback's story, but I feel like you could have like taken his story and given it to somebody else. <laughs> Like, if Dean, let's, I, I don't think it wouldn't work with Dean, because he's supposed to be crazy, but if you gave it to somebody who looked like Dean, like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, I can get behind that. But it's like Ryback's like this huge, like, fucking jacked bodybuilder who, you know, is the size of Missouri, and I'm, I don't want to feel bad for him. I want to be like, man, Brock Lesnar's fucking crazy, or not Brock, uh, Ryback's fucking crazy, but, uh. I think he'll do okay. I think uh, I'll say I'll say thumbs up because I think he'll give him a good showing, especially coming back, um, coming back after the fire. And the one thing uh, we won't be able to talk about him because he didn't qualify for the rumble is uh, Eric Rowan, right? Good. The one guy out of the fucking rebellious rebels or whatever that he doesn't sucks. rumble. That was so funny to me. That was hilarious. That was garbage, man. Freaking sucks. Just like I've been trying to tell you people. That was funny as I, I kind of like. I don't know. At least it was there was something there when they first like they had him fucking solving Rubik's cubes and I like the the song and I guess the mask's kind of cool or whatever but I don't know it, it like I tried to give it a chance when he had the whole Big Show feud and I don't know it's just weird now I, why would I don't know I'm I'm not getting behind him it's just there's something there's something missing there I don't know if it's Eric Rowan just kind of being shitty, or if it's just like they're not showing us enough of him, maybe they're showing too much, I don't, I don't know. It's too much. It's just <laughs> too much of him. Alrighty then, Ace. We, 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 we talked about his opponent, but now it's time to give you a report on the big show. Getting a lot of mic time as of late. He is. Um, I think it'll be good. I think, you know, I'm going to say thumbs up because I feel like he could help somebody here. Um, I, think, I think he's just in there to help Roman Reigns in all honesty. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, he could... You know, maybe Roman Reigns fucking power bombs him out of the ring or something cool. Or so I'm gonna give him. A, I'm not gonna give him a thumbs down because I think he could actually contribute positively to this rumble. Um, he's not gonna win it, obviously. Like, could you imagine? Fuck. Oh God. Uh, big Show versus Brock Lesnar. That will um, sell the tickets. But but I think I'm gonna give him a thumbs in the middle because I think he could positively help the rumble and the build up to Mania, but. Not so much where I care about seeing him on TV. So. All right, then. This is going to be a package deal. Uh, the Miz and Damian Mizdow. Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, this is the one thing I'm actually really, out of all the other, like, mini storylines, I'm really looking forward to this. I want to see I want to see Miz get thrown out, and then I want to see him be like, Mizdow, hop out. And then, like, Mizdow just looks at him and he's like, no, not happening. And then he stays in the rumble or then gets his head kicked off by somebody and thrown out. And then Miz is pissed at him because of this, but, like, he stood up to him, so. Yeah. Because that's so funny, like, I'm going to win this. And everyone actually thinks for, like, a split second he's got a chance. He's like, I'm going to win this. I'm going to do it. And then he turns around and just gets fucking punched in the face by Roman and tossed out. (laughs) Roman Reigns is doing everything in this rumble, according to you. Miz just looks at him like, are you kidding me, man? Really? Really? (laughs) 
matches, though. I mean, okay, and people have talked about maybe having them, like, have a match at Mania. Like, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but that's that's got pre-show written all over it. The, like, really? You think the Miz? I don't know, because Miz has been so over. I think that could be a good second or third match, and especially if you're in California. Just do a Hollywood backlot brawl. I think that would be amazing. But once again, like, you could do that on the pre-show. <laughs> I guess I I don't know I I I think it's worthy of the mania spot. It just it feels like such a pre-showy match. I don't know, like maybe just because I'm I'm used to Miz being on the pre-show. <laughs> I, that just feels to me like I mean I think it could be a sick match. I think it could be a great match and funny and good, but it's just it feels like a pre-show match. Like I just look at it and you know I just picture like Byron Saxton being like. And don't forget to join us at 4 o'clock when The Miz takes on Damian Mizdow. So, um, but I'm actually really looking forward to that. That the more, Maybe not so much as the winner, but if you were to like tell me to care about something in the undercard, that would be it. Because I think they built it really well, and it's really entertaining. So, so I'm going give, to give Sandow or Mizdow a thumbs up. Uh, All right. say, well, uh, what about The Miz? Where do you give him? I guess just because he'll contribute positively too, I'll give him a thumbs up because I feel like they're kind of piggybacked together. All right. Um, so, so we, we got three three more dudes we're going to talk about here because we talked about I, I I I threw in some random people guys because honestly you guys will get bored if everyone's talking about because we know who everyone's going to talk about but you're not going to hear insight on if Cesaro has a chance or Stardust or. And no offense, but like the people who actually talk about that seriously are like you, they're kidding themselves. Like, yeah. I, I know people, whether you like uh, Cesaro or not, which and I like Cesaro, but you got to understand, you can't, like, look at it and be like, I think, you know, this is going to be his time. They hear you. They're going to fucking push Cesaro because you want them to. No, like, and sometimes you just got to laugh about it. That's the that's probably one of the only reasons I've stayed invested in wrestling for as long as I have, because when it got shitty, I decided to, you know, I could either get pissed about it and I could get mad and be like, oh, why did they have fucking this guy win? And why aren't they pushing this guy? Or you could just fucking laugh about it and just realize, like, it's a show. So, yeah. like, I, I like laughing at Cesaro. It's funny. that It helps me get involved into him, being able to laugh at him, because he's not going to win the Rumble. And whether he should or not, or whether he should be taken seriously as a competitor, maybe. You know, I'm not saying no to that. But, like, he's not, this isn't his year. Maybe next year, you know, but looking at it from right now, I just got to laugh and be like Cesaro, like he's funny, he's, <laughs> you know, thinks there's four ropes. So, like, yeah, I don't want to just be like, oh, well, I think Brian should win. Like, we don't need to talk for an hour about Brian should win. No, Brian should win. It's, it's funny. Like, you know, it, mm -hmm. I get I get entertainment out of it. I don't know about you guys, but. All right. Uh, Ace, Bad News Barrett. Oh, actually, you know, I, I felt really shitty because I thought he was doing really well before the injury, and I thought he had a lot of momentum going for him. Agreed. But, uh, but, and then, you know, he got hurt, which kind of sucked. But then, when he came back, I thought, you know, I thought it was kind of weird they gave him the belt right away, but I guess it makes sense because he had it when he left. Um, I think I think he'll get a decent showing. I don't know how great he'll do. Maybe give him, like, 20, 25 minutes. But I think I think he'll do well. All right. Uh now it's time for a final two, and I've been saving these two for last because, let's be honest here, they, these two are like the guys everyone's like choosing to win, but I don't think they're going to win. So, Daniel Bryan, Acers. Okay, with Bryan, I'm going to say, I know a lot of people are on the fence about this because they're like, oh, well, Bryan's already established. Let's establish a new star. What I would like to say about that is, you know, I mean, obviously you should focus on new stars as much as you can, right? You need to, um, but I don't think it's justifiable to say this guy should win the Rumble because Brian's already had his turn, and, it, you know, it's not fucking kindergarten. They don't need to share who wins the Rumble. <laughs> it's the best guy for it, who's ever the hottest at the moment, should win the Rumble. Like, if Brian's hotter than Reigns, which I feel like he is right now, I feel like Reigns had a lot of momentum going for him, but when he came back... It, Something something happened. I don't yeah, know what it was. I, I think when he came back, they just brought him back in a way where it's just like, yup, you're going to force him down our throats, and we're yeah. not going to like it. And so I don't think I don't think you can justifiably say 
well, Reigns, they need to build him. They need a new star. I don't think you should give somebody a rumble just because you need a new star. Like, even I remember when Sheamus and Jericho a couple of years back, a lot of people were pissed off because they were like, oh, Jericho, you know, he should have won it and fought. You know, he's never won a rumble. But I don't know. I felt like with Sheamus, there was more there for him because that was like he was coming off the feud with Henry mm-hmm. and he was moved to SmackDown. And so I thought there was more there. And initially, I was kind of like, oh, it's kind of weird, Sheamus. And, and, and also, at that time, too, Sheamus was a little bit more established than a Roman Reigns because Sheamus actually held the title in the past. And yeah, he was a guy, he, like, every, the uh, company like was... Cena, and he had beaten, you know, Orton mm-hmm. and shit, so... Yeah, and he was, like, a guy the company was high on, and then all of a sudden, they just totally dropped the ball and forgot about mm-hmm. him and made him into, like, such a terrible character that they had to do something, like... Roman yeah. Reigns, to me, he's not in the same boat as Sheamus, where, like, people are feeling bad that, like, you know, where it's like, man, Roman Reigns has been shitting on his whole career. No, no one's saying that about Ro- Roman Reigns, aka the cock fist. No one's saying that, like, man, cock fist has been shit on his whole career. He deserves this. Like, Sheamus, yeah. he, it, it, people had a reason to kind of, like, be okay with Sheamus winning the Rumble. Because it was like, hey, this is a guy that, you know, a lot of us bitch about that's not being pushed, that should be pushed. This is a guy that has a different look and a different persona than most of the other roster yeah that's fine they just handled poorly how he won the title that's the problem with the Sheamus booking is that they handled it so badly and then they just gave it back to Cena so he could fight Batista yeah but now you could almost argue that all three of the shield guys have been protected very well for the last three two years yeah Yeah. something like that so you could argue that they've had a lot like going for them but just like I mean for a while there, everyone was behind Roman, but what sucks about today's, you know, fan base is that somebody, you know, they like, and they want him to do well, but when he starts to do well, they turn on him. It happened with Cena in, like, 2006. You know, people liked Cena when he was the rapper and he was doing cool stuff, and then, you know, it, the chase is more fun. Once you're at the top of the mountain, you know, where else do you go? It's boring, so... I, you know, people liked Roman, and whether they want to say, oh, Reigns is boring, oh, he's another Cena. When they were in the Shield, everyone loved Roman. I mean, yep, like, oh, yep. Everyone and, was on the uh, Roman Reigns dick yeah, train. Fucking, and it just, the Re- Re- that, WrestleMania 30, I remember last year, everyone's like, dude, if they don't, like, I remember people saying this last year, and I don't want to hear any motherfucker say they never said that, because I remember some people on comment section saying, if they don't make Reigns champion by next year, I've lost faith in this company. So many people were on his dick saying he should yeah. win. And now all of a sudden, everyone's off of it. And like, it, it, it's like, to they me. Like, they want to like someone, but they don't want them to like them. Like, yeah. Everyone, you know, this hipster culture. We're like, oh, well, I liked Roman before. It was cool. And now everyone likes him. So it's like, well, I got to hate him now. And it's stupid. Why can't you just like someone or not like someone? Yeah. You know, just somebody else, you know. I'm, just because, let's say you like Roman Reigns, Chase. I'm not gonna not like him just because. Oh well, Chase likes him. I need to be different. Like yeah. that's stupid. Like I like I understand why people like Daniel Bryan. Like if you like him, that's cool. I I just, I just don't like him for my many reasons of you know watching the independents and you know he's a great wrestler. I'm not saying Daniel Bryan's terrible. I think he's great. I think he's fun to watch. I'm just saying like for me personally, he's not one of my favorite wrestlers. He used to fuck around with Homicide and Nigel McInnes. I like those guys more than Daniel Bryan. So screw y'all. If y'all think that's a dumb reason not to like someone, you guys probably didn't like someone when you were a kid when they were beating up on The Rock or something. That's why most people didn't like Triple H. I'm just saying like that's the reason why I don't like really like Daniel Bryan is that he's always been in feuds of guys that I like more than him. That, that's just the bottom line when it comes down to it. But I think he's great. I think he's really, really great in the ring. I don't know how many times I have to fucking say that. Like, everyone just thinks, like, oh, I just hate Daniel Bryan because everyone likes him. No, I I stated many times before, I wasn't that big of a Daniel Bryan fan when I was on the independence. Like, I laughed my ass off when he won the freaking world title two years ago. It was hilarious. Like, that shit was hilarious. Like, the way he won it was just, oh, my God, so funny. But, yeah, like, you know, with Bryan and Reigns, it's it's kind of interesting because I think a lot of people are thinking they're the favorites to win. But, Ace, I think people are forgetting about one guy. I think I know the guy that... You're thinking of. Yeah, I think people are forgetting about Randy Orton. I do too. I, I'm i trying to think how... Okay. You could argue at this point in time that Randy Orton is the most over as a baby face that he's ever been before. Mm-hmm. People like that I know personally that don't even watch wrestling, you know, they know Cena, they know Rock, no clue who Orton is. The second those fucking vines came out, you know how many of my exactly. friends were texting me and those and being like, man, look at this, Orton's hilarious. That RKO thing... I don't know why it took that long to catch on because I've been watching them RKO people for 10 years, 
But everyone just is eating it up now, and they think it's fucking hype. And, 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 and every time something happens, it still gets on. Like, Jameis Winston recently fell backwards. RKO out of nowhere. Like, they will do football plays. RKO out of nowhere. Like, it, it keeps going on. It, it hasn't died down as a fad. People still do RKO out of nowhere tweets or vines. Like, it's going back to the thing where I said, you know, earlier when I said, oh, people like it now, so I, I'm not going to like it because I want to be different. No, I love the fact that people are fucking talking about Randy Orton. No one knew who this guy was. Like, if, if I liked someone beforehand and now everyone likes him, I want to be like, yeah, isn't he awesome? I don't want to be like, man, you didn't like Orton, uh, you know, when he was fucking with Legacy. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited that they're sharing the same passion that I've shared for you know, the better part of my life now. It's been over half my life that I've watched this, and I'm excited when somebody else talks about it, whether whether they're making fun of it or whether they're, you know, saying, like, oh, it's cool. I, I mm -hmm. like it when people take an interest in what I've cared about for so long, right? Yeah. That's cool. And yeah. so Orton, at this point in time, I feel like is more over as a babyface than he's ever been before. Like, uh, what do you call it? The only times I can really think of is, when the Triple H, um, when he left Evolution, and then he was heel, heel, heel until, what, oh, wow, 2010, that was fucking dull. When he wasn't wearing the wrist tape, that was, oh, I hated yeah, that. Yeah, and then he just kind of fell off. But like you said, this is the hottest he's ever been. And to me personally, everyone said, like, one of people's many defenses were to Daniel Bryan. Why he deserves a spot at WrestleMania 30 was Daniel Bryan is in the pop culture with the Yes chant. And I always made this argument. How many people know that's Daniel Bryan's chant? Because, like, that, to me, anyone can do the yes, yes, yes. Thing. Like, I'm like a sporting, like, just in general, mm -hmm. not just. But not everyone just. knows who's the owner of the RKL out, out of nowhere vibe. Everyone knows that's Randy fucking Orton. It's it. Our, I remember somebody asked me, they were like, man, what does RKO stand for? And I was like, oh, uh, well, Randy Orton, and then his middle name's Keith. And they're like, that's fucking gay. <laughs> Why would you name your move after? Well, whatever. I mean, people know who it is, right? Like, yeah. But, yeah, but people know who is doing. Yeah, people know who's doing the RKO out of nowhere vines. People know it's Randy Orton. And, and I'm just saying, like, like, like you said, Ace. If someone's like, you know, we we all want new stars, especially me. I want new stars to replace John yeah. Cena more than anyone in the world. But for me personally. I just feel if you can't decide on Roman Reigns and you feel like Daniel Bryan is just not believable enough to win this Rumble, if you're the WWE, you give this one to Randy Orton. Because I feel like he's... He... Lesnar, I think, could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I I feel like you'd need to add someone, like maybe a Seth Rollins, because Orton and Seth, you could do Seth, Brock, Orton. I mean, I don't think they will. There's They've got a lot of stuff that they could think about doing. And with Orton, like... Just imagine, just like, just picture it. There's like, let's say 10 guys. I want there to be a lot of guys in there. There's 10 guys, and he just comes out, and he fucking RKO's every single one of them. Oh, God. Even, I, like, I don't think I'd be able to sit for like an hour because I'd be too excited. That would be crazy. It's like throwing out losers like Justin Gabriel or whatever he's doing. Just, man, fuck. I'm picturing it right now, and I'm actually getting goosebumps. Like, that would be crazy. What? The Viper's back! I don't know Yeah, ex exactly. See, to me personally, I, I, for me, my prediction to win this Rumble is Daniel Bryan. I think he, he's going to win. Um, as much as I would like to see Cockfist win more, I think the prediction is Daniel Bryan. I think the WWE is going to shock people and have Daniel Bryan win. But who do I want to win more? Honestly, I want Roman Reigns. Uh, I, honestly, I would want Randy Orton number one. Cockfist 2, Ryback 3, and then Daniel Bryan 4. Because uh, for me personally, I, I, I don't care what anyone says. Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar, eh, I, I'm not feeling it. Okay, I'm, I'm just not one of those guys where it's like, yeah, I mean, Brock Lesnar, you guys should know, not a huge fan of his. Daniel Bryan, not a huge fan of his. I mean, the match could be super killer. Not going to deny it. The match could be super killer. But for me and my personal enjoyment, and no one else else has to think like me. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, for my personal enjoyment, that's not – Something I want to see from main event of WrestleMania. Now, Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar, okay, I'll be down with that, especially if you have Seth Rollins cashing at the end, because I still think no matter what the result is at WrestleMania, Seth Rollins has to walk out of WrestleMania as a champion. 
Yeah, I can see. The one thing I wanted to say was, I think Brian and Lesnar would have been great at SummerSlam. Like, if Brian didn't get hurt, I think, also, you wouldn't have everybody hating or, or loving Brock Lesnar. Because it's like, he beat The Undertaker, and everyone was like, oh, shit, he beat The Undertaker. And then when he beat Cena, like, there's a lot of people that don't like Cena, and they were happy about that. What are you talking but, about, Ace? Everyone loved John Cena. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, this is true. <laughs> but, but actually, let's say let's say he beats Taker, and everyone's like, "Man, holy shit!" Like, I mean, that's cool and all. And then like Brian, everyone still loves Brian. And then he let's say he beats the shit out of Brian. You can't tell me that everyone would have been like, "Man, bringing back fucking big stars ruined fucking Brian's moment." Like, but oh, Brock Lesnar gets what he wants. But like when he fought Cena, it's like, yeah, Brock Lesnar gets what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. I, you know, now that you say it, I wouldn't mind, because Orton, if, yeah, let's say you did Orton, Brock, and Seth. Like, I don't think they'll do that, because that's clusterfucking and yeah. shit. But let's say you did Orton, Brock, and Seth. I think, I'm trying to think how you could do it, like, because Lesnar's clearly... No, 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 I'm saying Seth doesn't have to be in the match. I'm saying you have Randy Orton and Brock straight up. Randy Orton wins the title. I, I think a lot of the fans would most likely cheer for Orton in that situation just because Randy Orton's so hot at this moment as a character. Then you have Seth Rollins come in and cash in the money in the bank afterwards, thus causing Randy Orton to lose. I think, you know, that could... And I'm trying to think how they would build Orton, Orton and Lesnar. Oh, it, it, it's easy, because, like, Lesnar's kind of part of the authority. Randy wants his title back. You know, Randy never got his proper rematch. Randy... I got my rematch. I never got my rematch, Hunter, and I won't stop until he's dead. And it's just it's like you could try to mend fences, like the working relationship between Brock and the Authority. Like Brock, look, I know, uh, I know that you don't really like the guys, but come on, Authority. Heyman's like talking in his ear, like, come on, he's a businessman, Brock. So you could do that, and then I think they would both like, even if you have people still liking Lesnar, I think. They would like still like Orton and maybe more so because it's you know he's still the underdog going into it because everyone's like, mm -hmm. and then that wouldn't really hurt Brock to lose. And and, 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 espe and especially if Brock's gonna be a little bitch about not resigning his contract, you can make Randy Orton look even more like a beast and look like more of a threat and make him look like a better superstar. Is if I you have Randy or if you have Randy Orton back up and you punt the shit out of Brock Lesnar. I think the Seth Rollins thing, too. Like, let's say Seth fights. I'm You and I were talking about Brian because we think that'd be... Like, imagine that match opening Mania. Give it 20 minutes. That'd be good. Let's say he beats Daniel Bryan and then he beats fucking Randy Orton mm -hmm. for the title. That, that would make him into a star. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and you could find something... And not only that, the best heel in the WWE because that's what you need in WWE is heels. I mean, you have Seth Rollins beat the golden child of the IWC and Daniel Bryan. That's already going to get fans pissed off as it is. And then you have Randy Orton do this awesome fucking moment beating Brock Lesnar, maybe by punting him in the head. Orton gets the title, and then you're down, 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 down. And then Seth Rollins wins the title. Fuck, you You create your number one heel. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like People would say, like, oh, well, that ruins Orton's moment. But it's like, it wouldn't. What, what it moment does Randy Orton need, though? That's the thing. Does Randy Orton need a WrestleMania moment? No, like he's established. I mean, I don't think he's ever won, won a title at Mania. No, he hasn't. Yeah, but I mean, so I remember I was looking at it yesterday. Actually, I don't know why I was doing this. I was bored and I had an hour to kill. But I was, I wanted to compare Cena's record at Mania to Orton's. I think Cena's eight and three, and Orton's four and seven. And I was trying to think about Orton's victories, and I was like, okay, well, he beat Punk. He beat who else did he even beat? Uh, the fucking what do you call it? Remember Mania twenty? Rock yeah, he Sock? he beat that rock. He beat Rock and Sock twenty one. He lost to Taker twenty two. He lost to Mysterio twenty three. He lost in the Money in the Bank twenty four. He punted Triple H just had to lay on John Cena for the win. Twenty six. He beat um Legacy. So yeah, yeah, he so beat up Legacy. And then twenty seven. He beat up Punk twenty eight. He lost to Kane. Lol. Twenty nine. He lost to the Shield. And then thirty. He lost to Brian. On his birthday, he lost a cane. Man. Yeah, that, that's like the worst birthday ever. Losing yeah. a fucking cane. Yeah, but but for me personally, it's just like, like I said, it's just like Randy Orton just seems to me like he makes the most and best sense to win this Rumble. Mainly because like for me, I want to try to make Seth Rollins into the number one heel of this company. And I feel like the best way you do that is you have him beat Brian earlier in the night. And then you have him beat fucking Randy Orton for the title. 
That's the it, best it, way to make him the number one heel and into a fucking star. And it's not like you can't find something for Reigns. Like, oh yeah, no, to, yeah. If you want to find something for Reigns, like, you know, like, Cena. yeah, just have Cena face him. Just or or have Reigns go face off against the fucking Big Show. I guess, like, you know, if people say Reigns is not ready, fucking a, then wait until next year when there's a bigger crowd in Dallas. See if people are starting to say, you know what, Reigns is not being shoved down my throat like I thought he was going to be. Yeah. I like this guy now. That, well, that's the thing, and even like, see, the one thing that. Like, that's it. People like organically grown stars. They don't like it when someone's like, oh, we like this guy, so we're going to make you like him. Like, even with Brian, it was like, you know, we're, giving him a shot, we're giving him a shot, we're giving him a shot. Finally, they give him this shot, and he fucking steals the show at Mania. And I don't, I wouldn't say they're pushing Brian down our throats now. No, they're, 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 they're definitely not shoving Daniel. But, I mean, Ace. People Ace. I find now that don't like him as much because, like, even when, oh, he had his moment, it's fucking, you know, we take turns in the WWE, so now it's time for Roman Reigns to win. No. Like, I, I, I totally get what people are saying. It should, like, this should be also another Daniel Bryan moment. But for me personally, it's like, I, like, it would be cool to have Daniel Bryan be established, but I think this WrestleMania is all about Seth Rollins. And, and Ace is probably like, he's surprised hearing this because. Ace and I, like, in the past, like we said, we didn't fucking like Seth Rollins whatsoever when he first started. We are now both, like, Seth Rollins fanboys. Like, we like this dude. We we want this dude to succeed. Yeah, but, okay, but think about it this way. I think you could still, um, I think you could still, like, okay, picture this. Let's say Brian wins the Rumble. Let's say you have Brian Lesnar. Let's say that's the road. Yeah, you, have, you can have Rollins cash in there, too. He cashed in after. I feel like that would, I mean, it would still be cool, but... Uh, who I, he'd have to cash in on Brian, obviously. I mean, even if you like, e Brian, even if you do Seth Orton and then you do Brian, Brian, Brian Lesnar, and yes, Seth Cashin, that could work too. But this is what I'm saying here is, is why you should do Seth versus Brian and then Seth cashing on Orton because Brian's already established babyface. We we all fucking know this. He's like beloved by the fans. You have Seth Rollins beat him in a hard fought match. One, you establish Seth Rollins as a legit heel because he can beat one of the top babyfaces in a tough, tough match that people are going to talk about because you know it's going to be a great match between the two. And then you have it where Randy Orton gets established as a babyface because he beats the Beast in Brock Lesnar, and then you have Rollins come in and cash in. That's why I think it's more effective because for me, Randy Orton, to establish him going full-on babyface, he has to win at Mania. That's, that's just me. He has to win. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't just have him, yeah, just come back and be like, oh, well, since the authority beat the shit out of me, you guys can like me now. Like, we need to have a reason to like him. Yeah. And so, uh, winning, coming back, RKOing everyone, winning the rum. Oh, especially, like, can you imagine if Reigns and Orton are the final two and everyone's like, okay, well, Reigns is going to win and then Orton wins? Yeah. Everyone's like, what? Orton won? I mean, there'd still be a lot of people who are like, why aren't that's what's going to piss me off, is there's going to be a lot of people after the Rumble if Reigns doesn't win, because you can't fucking please them. They're going to be like, yeah, Reigns should have won. Like, oh, I, you know, they should have built his For me, star. for it's, me. It's not right. You for know? for it's me. It's not his time, and they're not getting behind him. You don't mm -hmm. fucking just give him a Rumble. Yep, but here's it for me. These are the people that I'd be okay with winning the Rumble. Cockfist, a.k.a. Roman Reigns. Dean Ambrose. Okay. Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, uh, Ryback, and Bray Wyatt. Those are the only six that I would be okay with. I won't give a fuck who got eliminated when or how they fucking won. Those would be the only people where I say, you know what, I'm fine with that. I'm good. I don't. I don't need to complain about it. They gave me. They gave me a new star. They gave me two established stars that could that could be threats to Brock Lesnar and Bryan and Orton. You know, there's a new star being made out of the, you know, four guys there. I'm fine with that. You know, yeah. that that because, like, to me, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because whoever fucking wins that title, to me, is going to get cashed in on. Seth Rollins is going to walk out as champion. That that needs to happen, for me at least, at WrestleMania. Because I feel like he deserves the championship, but also because he can become your number one heel. Which you're missing in your company. My, I think my, I'm going to say my official prediction, just like what I think mm -hmm. they're, um, what I think they're going to do is I think I'm going to predict Roman because I think that's the route they're going to go. But I still think there's like a lot of other options. Like a lot of people for a while have said it's locked, it's set in stone, Roman's winning the Rumble. I think there's a lot of other options like we were saying you could look at. Even if, you know, a wild card like Dean Ambrose wins, I don't think he will. 
but there's, you know, Brian, a lot of people think Brian, I think Brian could. I guess for me, my list pretty much looks pretty similar to yours, we think alike, but um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Yeah, Bray, I don't think Bray will win. He, he could. Um, maybe, you know, maybe Bray wins. He's a, I'm just trying to think how they could even do it, because the, from the reports I've read, you know, they change all the time. But from what I've heard from a lot of people saying is maybe Bray and Taker go at it. And that's why they keep building the whole, you know, Bray fucking can beat anybody. So maybe he wins the Rumble, but he chooses to fight Taker. Like, it'd be stupid. <laughs> but especially now, the, the mystique of Taker, like, fighting at Mania, like, it's gone. So even if Taker, this is completely not even related to the Rumble, but even if Taker um, does go to WrestleMania, and let's say he fights Bray Wyatt or Lesnar again, I don't know, whoever he fights, the mystique's just gone, I feel like, it's, it'd be yeah. weird. So, yeah, I, don't, I, I totally agree, but, so, so what's your Rumble prediction next? You, you went far off from there. <laughs> it barely, I don't know how I started talking <laughs> Taker's streak, and existence in general, man. No, uh, I'm gonna say Roman. I'm gonna say Roman, because I think, you know, that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like when they want to do something, they do it. Whether last year when people hated uh, Batista, they didn't give a fuck. They were like, <laughs> Wait, the Rumble. Who the fuck are you? Deal like, with it. Take away my fucking pick for the Rumble? No. Fuck that. Like, they didn't care. So, I, so that's why I think Roman will win. But it'd be cool if it was a curveball, especially with Orton, because now I'm thinking about Orton since you mentioned it. So. I'm just saying it's like RPO out of nowhere would be amazing headline before for WrestleMania. Everyone's shitting on Reigns right now. Everyone's fucking so hype on. Reigns. I think I think Orton's like the the safety net. Like and that's weird for and plus people were wanting to see Orton versus Brock Lesnar anyways. It's not like Orton and Lesnar is like a terrible matchup. Yeah, I'd agree. Especially like even from before that. Like I mean, people. Are always you know, when Lesnar was first coming up, and I guess it was pretty much the same time as Orton. It's weird, because when I think about, like, Orton, Lesnar, uh, uh, Cena, and Batista, I, you know, they came up at the same time, but it just, it doesn't it feel like Lesnar was there before them? Like, yeah. I mean, he was made before them, he won the title before them, but it just feels like they came up at different times, and Lesnar was there for years. Like, that Cena, the Cena-Brock match at Backlash 03, it just feels like Cena just debuted the night before. <laughs> Lesnar's been there for like six years or something. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally get what you're saying. Where, where it's just like Lesnar was like some mid Carter in the 1999, and yeah, and like he just finally rose to ranks in 2002 when that's not really the case. I can totally see what you're yeah. saying there. But anyways, hey, so you are saying that you're, I'm saying Daniel Bryan's gonna win the Rumble. Same you're Bryan? saying, huh? You're saying Daniel Bryan? Yeah, yeah, I'm predicting Daniel Bryan. I think you're gonna give it to him. Okay, I'm gonna say. You're, you're saying Reigns. I'm going to say Reigns, yeah. As much, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess I wouldn't hate. I mean, I'd still like to see Reigns win. I don't know if it's necessarily his time. I guess if I had to pick somebody I want to win, well, now I want Orton. I, I, want, I want Orton to win more, I more than anyone. I about fantasy booking there, but, like, I guess I kind of wanted Brian before because I thought Brian and Lesnar. Because I think Reigns and Brock, it's just well, weird. That, that, that's just, that, that won't be best it's for business. It's a weird match. I don't yeah. know. Uh, that's why I'd like if. Reigns wins and Seth wins the title, then you have the triple threat. I think yeah. that would be sick with Dean because then it gives something for Dean to do. Right? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Reigns because I think at the end of the day, I think Reigns is gonna win and everyone's you know either gonna be really happy or pissed off because they're shoving fucking Rock's cousin down our throat. So he's related to the Rock and he's Samoan. Boys, thank you for for coming on and talking about pro wrestling with me. <laughs> This was a lot of fun. We we rambled for a bit, but that's good. You yeah. know, like well, people don't get to hear your thoughts anymore, Ace. So it's fine. And I used to hate, you know, I had twenty minutes to make a video, and I fucking flew through shit. Like I didn't even care. You know, it's funny because at the beginning of the video, we said, "Oh, you know, we're only gonna we're only gonna talk about you know the main things. We're not gonna talk about the little shit." But we were still able to talk for an hour, and I like that. Versus, you know, I'd come on and I'd make a 10, 15 minute video about. You know, oh, well, this was Extreme Rules 2012. Punk and Jericho had a good match, but whatever. And I didn't, I wasn't passionate. Now, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I'll do it again. So I don't know if I'm ever going to make my own channel, but I'll join you if you'll, if you'll have Yeah, yeah. Would, would you like to come back for the fast lane? Oh, maybe. For, I would, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe we'll just do Chase and Ace pay per view predictions from now on. Oh, 
that could be that could be a staple. Because, that could be. That see, could I like be... This. It's fun. We, I mean, whether somebody sat through the whole thing, I don't know if they did. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure most people did because like a lot of people do sit through. For whatever reason, people don't like seeing your face for like 20 minutes, but they have no problem to listen to your voice for over an hour. It's funny. I almost agree with that because there's so many times I'll put on a video. And that's why I like pod. I think podcasts are big. Like everyone's got a podcast now, mm -hmm. but like people like that. I think they just like being able to hear someone talk for a little bit. And you know, with a video, there's work to it, right? You're not looking at anything. Yeah. I think videos are best when they're like two minutes long. And let's say Ray William Johnson. I don't know if he's still. I don't think he's on anymore. No, he he retired. <laughs> skits for like two minutes, and you know, and people love it. But you know, it's kind of boring to watch someone sit there and talk for half an hour and i've done it before i've sat down and i've analyzed and i've been negative and it's it's more fun to just come on here with somebody that i like and someone that i'm good friends with and just okay okay, okay. calm just, down cm punk uh, calm down cm punk yes we had fun and this is a hell of a lot more fun than making fucking pay-per-view reviews that's that's why i like predictions because there's guesswork to it with reviews you you got to give your opinion on shitty stuff that happened. With predictions, you could be optimistic and be like, "Hey, well, this could happen. Fucking Orton could come back and win the Rumble." Or, yeah. So it's, I think, yeah. If you're down, I'll I'll try to start um doing the pay per view predictions with you because right, for sure, I think, I think it's more fun than necessarily. And then I, you get to talk about what's happened the past month and yeah. you know, kind of where they're gonna go, where they've been, right? So it's cool. Yeah. So it's not that it's not like people. I know a lot of people asked if I still watched wrestling, like when I stopped making videos, and I did. It's just, it wasn't fun anymore, and I don't want to, you know, come on and do it if it's not fun. And even if, you know, I, I was getting decent views. I don't know if I was getting a lot of views. I was getting, you know, I, was, I, I had like 1,500 subscribers, so people were watching, but it's just wasn't the same. It was the same comments. People would be like, yeah, I liked that match too, or no, yeah, you're right, that match sucked. <laughs> And it just wasn't wasn't fun. So this is fun. So hopefully we can do this again in yeah. the uh, near future. For Fastlane, we will do. It, we will definitely do it for sure for Fastlane and of course WrestleMania. So oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So thank you Ace for joining me. Um, Ace has no channels for me to promote or Twitters. So I, I hey hold up hold up. I do have Twitter. <laughs> oh okay. I didn't I'm know if you want to promote your Twitter. I, I'm with it. I have a, uh, I think it's fuck what is it at Trelore95. It's my last name. Um. I'll get Chase to put it in the description box. Yeah. I have an Instagram if you guys want to follow it. Oh, it's, shit. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, at, uh, what am I at? Uh, Corey Trelore 95. Oh, yeah, my name's not Ace. I, I'm, I'm sure I came out with that. Have <laughs> <laughs> uh, you been listening this long? Just know that his real name is an Ace. <laughs> yeah, I, it, 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 it caught on. People like Ace. Um, my, my dad's called me Ace for years. It caught on. Um, my... Snapchat, I think, is Trelore ninety. You, you're you're really you're throwing, throwing out your Snapchat. I'm fuck if people want to send me dick pics, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't judge. What else do I got to plug? Um, no, no, I guess that's it. You guys can play trivia crack with me. I don't know if you guys have played that game yet, but it's oh, cool. I, I hate that game. It's so annoying. <laughs> Did James get you on that game? No, um, fuck, I haven't talked to him for a while. No, uh, all my friends James, if you guys don't know, is wrestling guy or not. Oh, right, yeah, I guess, yeah, I don't know if I know. I, I forget, you know, we're recording sometimes. <laughs> that's what I need to. We're just talking, this is, that's why I said it's fun. It's not yeah. like, I have, I'm like, oh, man, I gotta make a video. But, but yeah, um, yeah, he's a uh, wrestling guy. I guess he's James Carter TV now. Yeah, James like, Carter TV, wrestling guy 09, so. Why not? I was, because, because he got us all into that, so that's why I was wondering. But once oh, again. Yeah, you guys into it too? Yeah, I haven't, fuck, I haven't really, I don't know if it's just you, like, I really just kind of talk to you now, like when Justin's on, or like not ankle break anymore. What is it? Uh, JD Venom. JD Venom. Um, and uh, I don't talk to. I don't feel like he would still uh, yeah. make videos or. What's that getting my internet being? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, you, yeah. Your internet was just cutting out, and I'm not going to edit that out because I'm too lazy. So anyways, Ace, thank you once again for joining me. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and I'll see you all next time for the Royal Rumble review. Anyways, say goodbye to Ace, people. See, see, see you in February, Acers. There you go. I'll see you guys.